Hello everyone, welcome to Biotech Notebook. In this video, we are going to see kinetics of batch heat sterilization of liquid media. Sterilizing the liquid media before use in your process is important to prevent contamination from foreign microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, fungi and etc. Okay, so in sterilizing process, we are eliminating all these foreign microorganisms. So sterilizing your media is essential for maintaining a pure culture of desired microorganism thereby you will get a high quality products and also it prevents the unwanted byproduct formation and toxin formation as we know that media may be sterilized by filtration radiation ultrasonic treatment chemical treatment or heat method okay but however for practical reasons steam is used almost universally for the sterilization of liquid media okay the major exception is the use of filtration mostly the media which used for animal cell culture contains heat label compounds so heat label compounds if we sterilize by steam then the steam will destroy the heat label components present in the medium for such type of media filtration is used to sterilize the media okay, in steam sterilization of liquids there are two types one is batch heat sterilization and another one is continuous heat sterilization okay so in this video we will see in detail about kinetics of batch heat sterilization of liquid media in the batch sterilization of the medium for a fermenter may be achieved either in the fermentation vessel itself or you can sterilize your medium in a separate mash cooker whatever the method the liquid is first heated to your sterilization temperature okay the maximum sterilization temperature used for media is 121 degree centigrade okay so the first step in batch heat sterilization is you have to heat up your media to sterilization temperature okay this can be achieved by three ways by introducing steam into the coils or jackets of your fermentation vessel or steam is bubbled directly into the medium or the vessel is heated electrically that is your fermenter vessel is heated electrically so we can raise the temperature of media here by three ways okay by introducing steam into the coil or jacket or you can bubble steam directly into the medium or the vessel itself heated electrically okay this is your temperature time profile for batch heat sterilization okay. raising the temperature of medium in large fermenters can take a considerable period of time okay so the time taken to heat your media to your sterilization temperature is depending upon the rate of heat transfer from the steam or electrical element to the medium okay so here heat transfer plays a role so there are three periods in your batch heat sterilization system one is heating period then holding time then you have to cool your media this is your heating period so it depends upon the rate of heat transfer from your steam to media in large fermenter it can take a considerable period of time okay once your uh, sterilization temperature is reached that is your 121 degree centigrade is reached the temperature is held constant for a particular period of time this period is known as holding time so after holding time you should cool your media so cooling water in the coils or jacket of the fermenter is used to reduce the medium temperature to the required level okay in batch heat sterilization method you have to increase your media temperature to sterilization temperature that is 121 degree centigrade then you have to keep constant for some particular time this period is known as holding period and the period you keep the temperature constant is known as holding time after your holding period you have to reduce the media temperature to the required level there are three periods in batch heat sterilization one is heating period then holding period then cooling period okay cell death occurs at all times during batch sterilization okay not only in holding time it includes heating period and cooling period there will be a cell death then one more point you have to note down is this heat not only destroy your contaminant organism it also capable of destroying nutrients in the medium okay so to minimize the loss of your nutrient in your medium you have to reduce the holding period okay so the holding time at the highest sterilization temperature should be kept 
as short as possible okay so this is because to minimize the nutrient loss in your medium in batch sterilization system to achieve the desired level of cell destruction we have to estimate the holding time okay so heat sterilization is capable of destroying contaminant organism and also it is capable of destroying nutrients in the medium so to minimize this nutrient loss holding time at the highest sterilization temperature should be kept as short as possible so this is your time versus number of viable cells present in your medium let us denote the number of contaminants present in the raw medium is n0 that is initial number of cells present in your medium before your sterilization process of n0 is number of contaminants present in the raw medium then n1 is during this heating period your number that is number of contaminant is reduced used to n1 okay during heating period your number of viable cell is reduced from n0 to n1 then at the end of your holding period your number of viable organism present in your medium is n2 then the final cell number after cooling is nf that is your cell number is reduced from n2 to nf ideally your nf that is the final cell number after cooling should be zero okay so at the end of your sterilization cycle we want no contamination to be present in the medium but absolute sterility requires an infinite long sterilization time so it is theoretically impossible to achieve 100% sterility so as we can't achieve 100% sterilization of your media normally the target level of contamination is expressed as a fraction of a cell so which is related to the probability of contamination okay which is acceptable level of a contamination so for example the final number of cell nf is equal to 10 power minus 3 means we accept the risk that one batch in thousand will not be sterile at the end of the process okay so once n naught and nf are known okay you if you know the initial contaminant present in your fermentation medium and final contamination then we can determine the holding time required to reduce the number of cells from n1 to n2 by considering the kinetics of cell death then the destruction of your microorganism that is contaminant by steam is considered as a first order reaction so it is represented by dn by dt is equal to minus kd into n so this negative sign indicates the number of viable cells decreases with respect to time so your equation is dn by dt is equal to minus kd into n n is number of viable cells d is time and kd is specific death constant it is a first order chemical reaction then you can rearrange this reaction as dn divided by n is equal to minus kd into dt so dn divided by n is equal to minus kd into dt then this kd is a strong function of temperature that is kd is depends upon your arrhenius equation later we will see in detail about kd so your direct integration of this equation 2 is valid only when the temperature is constant okay so we are maintaining the temperature constant in holding period so integration of equation 2 is valid only when the temperature is constant that is during the holding period okay so we can integrate this equation with the limits n1 to n2 that is n1 is number of viable cells before your holding period and n2 is number of viable cells after your holding period okay is equal to minus kd into 0 to thd your holding time period okay so 0 to thd okay so that is equal to so if you integrate 1 by n you will get ln n so integration of 1 by n is equal to ln n then your limit n1 to n2 and integration of dt is equal to t okay so if you apply the limit 0 to thd you will get thd minus 0 so thd so this left hand side is minus kd into holding time thd if you apply this limit you will get ln of n2 minus ln of n1 is equal to minus kd into thd okay then you to remove this negative sign you can rearrange this equation as ln n1 minus ln n2 equal to kd into thd okay so you just multiplied every term with negative sign so ln n1 minus ln n1 becomes plus ln n1 and ln n2 becomes minus ln n2 and minus kd plus kd into thd okay ln n1 minus ln n2 you can write as ln of n1 divided by n2 is equal to k2 into thd that is your holding time so holding time is equal to ln of n1 divided by n2 divided by your kd okay your holding time thd is equal to ln of n1 by n2 divided by kt 
So in this equation, T H D is holding time. Then N one is number of viable cells at the start of your holding period, and N two is number of viable cells at end of your holding period. Then K D is evaluated as a function of temperature using the Arrhenius equation. So K D equal to A into E power minus E D divided by R T. So where A is Arrhenius constant and E D is activation energy for thermal cell death. Then R is ideal gas constant and T is absolute temperature that is temperature at Kelvin. Then if you substitute this equation four in equation three, you will get holding time T H D is equal to ln of N one by N two divided by K D that is A into E power minus E D by R T. So to use this equation, we must know N one N two. These N one and N two are determined by considering the effect of cell death during the heating and cooling period when the temperature is not constant. So for that combine equation one and four. So so your equation one is dN by dT is equal to minus kD into n. So dN by dT is equal to minus kD. So as we know that minus kD is equal to a into e power minus e d divided by R T into n. So if you integrate this equation for heating period with the limits n of tends to n one and time is zero to t one. So before you were heating period number of viable cells is n not and after you were heating period number of viable cells is n one. So this is your initial time, and after your heating period, your time is T1. Okay, so that this is the time to raise your medium temperature to sterilization temperature. That is the maximum sterilization temperature, 121 degrees centigrade. So if you integrate this equation, you will get ln of n naught divided by n1. Okay, so as we already derive the expression for holding time, the same procedure you apply, you will get this equation. That is ln of n naught by n1 is equal to integration of 0 to T1. A into e power minus e d divided by R T into d T. So this equation is for heating period. Then for cooling period, your limit is n two to n f, and your time is t two to t f. So ln of n f divided by n two is equal to integration of t two to t f a into e power minus e d by R T into d T. So t one is time at the end of heating, t two is time at the end of Holding period and T F is time at the end of cooling period. Then you can complete the integration of equation six and seven. Once you know the temperature varies with the time during the heating and cooling period. Then one more important parameter in batch heat sterilization is del factor. Okay, del factor is nothing but it is a measure of the fractional reduction in viable organism count produced by certain heat and time regime. It is a viable reduction of your viable organism. That is, it is n naught is your initial number of cells present in your medium, and n t is after sterilization your number of viable cells in your medium. So, del factor is equal to ln of n naught divided by n t. So, ln of n naught divided by n t is equal to k into t. So, ln of n naught divided by n t is del k is equal to a into e power minus e d by r t into t. by knowing the original number of organisms present in the fermentation media and the risk of contamination considered acceptable required del factor may be calculated by using this equation del is equal to ln of n not divided by nt okay so as we know that a frequently adopted risk of contamination is 1 in 1000 which indicate nt is equal to 1 divided by 1000 that is equal to 10 power minus 3 viable cells that is Number of viable cells after your sterilization process is 10 power minus 3 viable cells. For example, if the unsterile broth contains 10 power 11 viable organism, that is your initial number of viable organism present in your broth, n not is equal to 10 power 11, then the del factor may be calculated as del factor del is equal to ln of n not divided by n t. Here n not is equal to 10 power 11 and n t is 10 power minus 3. So del is equal to ln of 10 power 11 divided by 10 power minus 3. So if 10 power minus 3 comes to numerator, you can write it as plus 3. So ln of 10 power 11 plus 3 that is equal to ln of 10 power 14 that is equal to 32.2. So overall del factor required is 32.2. The reduction of your number of viable cells from 10 power 11 to 10 power minus 3, your overall del factor required is 32.2 the destruction of cell occurs during the heating and cooling broth as well as during the period of your holding time that is at 121 degree centigrade the overall del factor may be represented as del overall is equal to del heating plus del holding plus del cooling so del overall you can be calculated if you know the initial number of cells present in the medium and 
if you accept the probability of contamination is 10 power minus 3 that is 1 by 1000 okay then knowing the temperature time profile for the heating and cooling of the broth okay so this can be prescribed by the characteristics of your available equipment it is possible to determine the del heating and del cooling okay so by knowing del heating del cooling and del overall you can calculate the del holding time okay so by knowing the del factors of heating and cooling the holding time may be calculated to give the required overall del factor okay so by knowing del heating del cooling you can calculate del holding to give the required overall del factor thank you thank you for watching my videos if you like my videos please do like share and subscribe thank you